The Tim's video study was an enormous international study of 8th grade teachers in classrooms throughout the world. The study was actually conducted twice, once in 1995 and again in 1999. And hundreds of hours of videotapes of classrooms were taken from seven different countries. The researchers wanted to know, could the international differences in learning be explained by international differences in teaching? In other words, do American students suffer from bad teaching? Do Japanese students benefit from great teaching? The results that the researchers found were striking. It turns out that there actually are major differences between the way ma math is taught in America and the way math is taught by the highest scoring countries in the world. Take for instance the differences between an 8th grade geometry lesson in America and an 8th grade geometry lesson in Japan. In American lessons, this class tends to start with teachers explaining how to do a problem and then students spending a lot of the lesson practicing that problem. Now, if you grew up in the United States, that probably doesn't sound crazy. That actually sounds pretty reasonable. And that's because we're brought up that way. First, the teacher explains something, but that's not enough. If you want something to really sink in, you can't just hear it from somebody else. You have to practice it. So students are going to spend most of the class time practicing a problem after they've heard how to do it from the teacher. That's going to look something like this. Here's a clip from a classroom in America that was studied in the Tim's video project. Elementary. So if 3 is 120, what must 2 be equal to? 60. 60. If 2 is 60, what must 4 be equal to? 60. Okay. All the rest are done the same way. Wait, did you catch that? Let's go back and listen again. All the rest are done the same way. All the rest of the problems are done the same way as the problem that was already just presented and gone over in class. That's a really American way of doing things. That's not the way it's done in other countries. Let's look at a problem solving session from a classroom in Japan. In the American classroom we just saw, it. first the teacher explains how to do a problem, then students practice problems that are really similar to the one that he explained. Here's what happens in this classroom instead. The teacher's going to pose a problem, and he's not going to explain how to do it. That's very weird if you're American. He's going to give a problem and not tell them how to do it. Instead, he's going to leave that as a challenge to students to work on in class, and they're going to spend most of the class working on that project. If you're American, you're probably wondering, well, how do they ever learn how to do it if they don't know how to solve the problem? Well, what they're going to do is they're learning how to solve problems in class that they've never seen before. If the students get stuck, and in the lesson that we're watching, they actually do get stuck, the teacher tells them to move into groups, and then he kind of goes around and maybe gives hints if he feels that it's necessary. And then at the end of a class, he'll grab students together and ask them to present their solutions to the entire classroom. As it turns out when people solve problems, there's almost always different approaches to solving the problem. And so the teacher is going to intentionally pick kids who have different approaches to present to the class. In short, while American students watch and practice, Japanese students struggle and then share their work with each other. The story gets even more interesting when you look at other countries that were studied besides the US and Japan. When the researchers looked more carefully at the most successful countries, what they saw was that they were all spending significantly more time in the classroom, allowing the students to struggle with conceptual problems. American students were spending significantly less time struggling with conceptual problems. As a matter of fact, when they looked really carefully, American teachers were almost never letting their students struggle. Even when they were presented with a conceptual problem that would be tricky, teachers would jump in and say, oh, I see you're having trouble with number 37 here's how you do it, taking away the opportunity for the students to get smarter by struggling.